Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fair and Football First and Ten. I'm your host, Jordan Mann. Alongside me is head coach Rob Grandy. Good to see you again, Coach. Yeah, Jordan, good to see you. Fairham's coming off a bye week this week. They uh, face Greensboro College this upcoming week, but we're going to recap their huge neutral site win against Hampton Sydney, where, Coach, you were down 20 to seven in the first half. Talk about how what your mindset was down two scores. That's what we've been all year, just playing the next play, and uh, it's a long game. I tell the team, you don't win or lose the game the first half. Right. And you got to make sure you make some adjustments, you get the tempo of what the other team's doing, and uh, you know, our guys responded. Finished the first half strong to take the one-point lead into halftime, and you know, really got things going in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, say things get things going in the third and fourth quarters, putting it lightly, as Farron was down 20-7, to seven, and then the final score was Farron 42 and Hampton Sydney 20. So whatever you said at halftime and the momentum just stayed with the Panthers. And I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you held Hampton Sydney to 26 rushing yards? Yeah, at the end of it, I think it was and somewhere around that, there, 25, 26 yards, which, you know, a lot of negative plays in the backfield, yeah. um, you, know, you know, contribute to that kind of number, but that's a great credit to the defense and how they responded to, to a good offense. Coach Fabert's been doing it for a long time, and I've been on the other side of the coin many a times against Hampton Sydney, so it was a great effort by our defense, that second half in particular. Yeah, this was a perfect example of all three phases of the game being an integral part of winning the game as Brian Mann, plays offense, was awarded USA South Honor. Montel Lee had four sacks in the game. He was in USA South and had national honors as well. And then Tyler Morgan, I mean, he flipped the field with the career-long and record-breaking 72-yard punt, and he also received USA South honors. So when you go three for three in three different parts of the game, you're definitely going to be on the winning side. Your chances are really good. They are. And it's a credit to those kids and the players around them. And um, you know, we talk about complementary football weekly with the offense and defense and special teams feeding off each other. And um, that was a classic case of that, you know, coming to play uh, in that game. Yeah, and to Montel Lee was not alone. Purcell Bravine had to sack with his own. Rob Chandler had two. So seven sacks and team racked up 12 total uh, tackles for losses, two forced fumbles, and two picks and six pass breakups. I mean, that is an aggressive defense, and it showed on Saturday, or past Saturday. It did, and you know, we've been preaching turnovers uh, on defense, and uh, to go plus five and uh, get five turnovers, and the other side of that coin helps you in practice when you're preaching that type of mentality. It helps your offense secure the ball. Right. And, um, you know, that's a huge part of you know, the success we had was that we didn't turn the ball over and we were able to, um, you know, force five turnovers in that game. Yeah, and on the offensive side of the ball, Harvey Taylor completed six passes but for 140 yards with a long of 67 for a touchdown, and then he ran for 140 also. So when he's doing his little Lamar Jackson, if you will, for Farm, <laughs> where he's running and throwing effectively and for scores, it's a, it's a good day for the Panthers on Saturdays. And then Brian Mann is just a Mike Allsott. <laughs> 29 carries and 180 yards. Danny Woodhead probably with two touchdowns. And so Harvey Taylor, like I said, he had three rushing touchdowns. So four scores with, for him and two for Brian Mann on offense. I mean, that's just it's a beautiful Saturday offensively. It's a pretty good balance. And that's uh, something that um, you know, we talk about in the uh, – meeting room about keeping that run balance and you know the game kind of dictated a few more rushes than we threw the ball but uh, you know Harvey was effective when he did throw and uh, you know, had a great job great day on the perimeter in the run game and you know when you're able to work the perimeter the open the middle opens up for yeah. Brian and uh, you know just like I said just was one of those games that you like to be on that side of the coin and you know things started clicking and the, the guys just you know took that momentum all the way for 60 minutes. Yeah, I, the scoreboard tells a story. And uh, since we couldn't do the coach show last week, you were off recruiting last week. How was that? Yeah, it's right. better when you win, I can tell you that. Yeah. And uh, a lot of positive 
you know, feedback from local coaches. Got a chance to go down to Martinsville, Danville area and south side to Roanoke and over to Lynchburg, kind of that makeup of our surrounding region. And a lot of good footballs played and got some good players on our current roster from those schools. So uh, to reach out and be able to meet with those coaches, you know, during the bye week was, uh, I think, a crucial part of the recruiting process. And uh, it was a good, good week for us. Yeah, uh, I also was going to follow up that question. Uh, is there, I know it's your first year at Ferrum, but with your experience as Emory Henry too, is there a place you always feel comfortable recruiting in, like a certain area, if you will? Because uh, for basketball, Coach Thorpe, I, we have four guys from back home on our team currently, and so he just loves like Alamance County and back in North Carolina. So I didn't know if you had like a Martinsville area, like you said. Or, right. No, I like where good players play. Yeah, you know, yeah. Wherever the school players, is, yeah. whatever the school colors, mascot is uh, important to find the good ones. And, um, you know, there's plenty of them around our area. And I definitely want to make sure the backyard's taken care of. And, uh, you know, we got to extend a little further, but we got to start right in our backyard. And, uh, like I said, just to have that week and that opportunity to get out and see some coaches and talk about their current players and wish them well going into last weekend was – a you know, big opportunity for fair football. Yeah, I mean, as long as you find the kids, they could be Franklin County or they could be Virginia Beach, but if they can play and you feel like they're in your system, that's all for it. And that's true. It's a, it's an op opportunity. Better players, better coaches, and better results. So that's a, a dynamic we got to work on, and you know, we've got a good mix of kids right now, and just trying to fit the right ones, you know, moving forward into our program. Now, switching gears, looking ahead to this Saturday, going to, or, to Greensboro, what's the game plan as of now? I know it's still early in the week, midweek, but what are you, the coaching staff talking about, like offensively, defensively, I'm pretty confident? You know, weekly, uh, you know, our theme's been to take care of fair and football. I mean, every opponent's going to be a little bit different. And, um, you know, Greensboro's coming off a win going into our bye week, and uh, they've improved weekly since the beginning. They've got similar to us, a new coaching staff, and um, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get, get your kids moving in the right direction. But uh, you know, we've concentrated on the same things we've been doing since August, and that's uh, taking care of the football, turnovers on defense, you know, getting to be better tacklers, special teams. And I think the more we focus on Farum, you know, the better we'll be on Saturday. And that's not to say we don't have to be aware of the schemes and players on the right. other side of the ball, but um, you know, that's a, opportunity for us to just continue to progress offensively and defensively. Now that game is at Greensboro at 1 o'clock this Saturday. If any Farm alum or Farm fans are around the Greensboro area, please come out and show support to your Farm Panthers. And the next home game is a couple weeks away. It's October 15th versus Maryville, but we'll get to that when that comes for that coaches show. But like I said, Come out, support your fair and Panthers. I am Jordan Mann, Coach Grandy. Thank you as always. This no is Fair Football, first and ten.